This is chapter 8, hands-on exercise number 1, and this chapter is about statistical functions. In the first hands-on exercise, we're going to talk about um, using conditional math and statistical functions like sum if, average if, and count if functions, and then the plural of those sum ifs, average ifs, and count ifs. In addition, we're going to talk about quartiles and percentile functions, and then we're going to talk about ranks. So let's get started with our worksheet. We are working with the file called assessment, the hands-on exercise uh, file called assessment. What we see here is we have um, four worksheets along the bottom. We are working with educator assessment, the first one. And what we're going to do in column H, we're going to do um, the singular. We're going to do sum if, average if, and count if. And then we're going to do plural with two conditions count ifs, sum ifs, and average ifs. We'll do some quartiles in column H, and we'll do some ranks in column E. And we're going to talk about doing uh, some salary ranks there. So what you, what you see on this particular spreadsheet is the last name of the person, their hire date, these are all teachers, high school teachers, their salary, what township they work in, and then their salary rank, which we will find soon. So let's start in cell H3. And we are going to do our first conditional function, um, a, a basically a statistical function um, using conditions. And if we go to our insert function, the fx, I want you to type in count if. We're only going to count it if a certain criteria is met. And we'll hit go, and then we'll hit OK. And it says, what is the range of values you're looking for? Okay. So we are going to count the number of teachers only if their hire date is before uh, January 1st, 2005. Okay? So I'm going to count these dates in B. All right? So it's B3 through B52 is the range. And the criteria is the less than sign and then the date, 1, 1, 2005. So of those 50 teachers, tell me how many were hired before January 1st, 2005. That's our if condition. And I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. And it turns out that we have 16 teachers that were hired before January 1st, 2005. We're going to do a sum if next. And the sum if is going to be very much like the count if. There's just going to be one more argument, one more th box that we have to fill in. So let's go to insert function. My cursor, the active cell, is in H4. I'll do insert function. I'll type sum if. And then I'll hit go. And then I'll select sum if. Now, we have three things now. A range, a criteria, and a sum. The range and criteria are identical to what we just did in the count if. So the range is going to be B3 through B52. The criteria is going to be less than January 1st, 2005. And what are we summing? Well, we're summing up their salaries, which is in column C. So I'll do C3 through C52. Okay. So the range is the dates. The criteria is listed there before January 1st, 2005. If those criteria are met, add up their salaries and hit OK. And you should get $790,922. Now we're going to do the same thing, but we're going to do an average if next. And the average if is going to be identical to the sum if, except I'm going to type average if. I'll hit go. And here we go. The range criteria and average range are identical to the sum if. So first thing is the range is going to be the dates. The criteria is less than 1, 1, 2005. And the average range is the salaries in column C. So C3 through C52. And then hit OK. So the average salary for those 16 professors hired before January 1st, 2005 is $49,432.63. 
if we look at this next set, uh, we're going to do uh, account ifs, sum ifs, and a average ifs. So they have multiple criteria. They have to have taught in the Acorn Township and they have to be hired before January 1st, 2005. Notice that there were 16 teachers hired before January 1st, 2005, but not all of them worked in the Acorn Township. So our count should be much smaller. Um, and in fact, our count should be six according to the book. So let's go ahead and show you the difference between a count in the singular and a count ifs. Or, I'm sorry, a count ifs, <laughs> count if singular and count ifs plural. Here we go. Count ifs in the search bar and select it. Now, it only looks like it has one criteria, but we're going to have two criteria. We're going to have two things that must happen. So, the first thing is they have to work in Acorn Township. So, the criteria range is D3 through D52. Criteria one is Acorn, and I have to put Acorn in quotes because it's text. The second criteria is the hire date. And that has to be, and that's B3 through B52, and that's less than 1, 1, 2005. And that's it. We could put more criteria in. With account ifs, we can have as many criteria as we need. Uh, in this case, we have two criteria. Let's hit OK. And we get six. So six teachers were hired before January 1st, 2005, and teach in the Acorn Township. The total payroll is going to be a sum ifs because we have two criteria. So we'll type S-U-M-I-F-S, sum ifs, and we'll select that. Now, what are we summing? Well, we're summing salary again. We want total payroll. But two criteria must be met, and we can do these in any order. Let's do the date first. B3 through B52 has to be less than 1-1-2005. That's the first criteria is the date. The second criteria is the township, D3 through D52. And the township has to be ACORN in quotes. And we hit OK. The total payroll of the six teachers that are teaching in ACORN Township and who were hired before January 1st, 2005 is about 290000 Let's do the average ifs next. Average ifs. We'll hit go. We'll find it in the search bar. What are we averaging? We're averaging salary again. That's always going to stay the same. What's our criteria one? This time we'll do township first because it doesn't matter. D3 through D52 has to be acorn in quotes. The second criteria range are all the dates and the dates have to be less than January 1st, 2005. We're averaging the salary of those six teachers and their average salary is $48,264.50. So what we've done right now, we've done a count if, a sum if, an average if, a count ifs because we had two criteria, sum ifs, and average ifs. The next thing we're going to talk about, and I'm going to hit save real quick, next thing we're going to talk about is the quartiles. Uh, let's do the ranks first. Let's do the ranks first. Okay, let's, let's explain what the ranks are. Um, let's click in cell E3, where the cursor is right now, and we'll go to Insert Function. And let's type Rank, and then see what we get. There are a number of different ranks that we can use. Um, if we use Rank Average, for example, um, it will take two salaries that are identical and average them. So if um, we have uh, the top 12 salaries and then number 13 and 14 were tied, they would be ranked 13 and a half. They would both be ranked 13 and a half. Um, with some of these others, they would both be ranked 13. They would skip the rank 14 and then we go straight to 15. So there are subtle differences between rank rank.eq and rank.average. Let's go ahead and follow what the book says and we're going to do rank.average. It says, okay, what, what's your number? What are you using as your number? Well, we want the first salary. 
and the first salary is in C3. What we're doing now is we're comparing C3 to a list of numbers and the list of numbers are all the salaries. The salaries in C3 through C52. So what it's saying is compare C3 to that range of salaries. Then compare C4 to that range of salaries. C5 to that range of salaries. Because the range remains the same each time, but the number that we're using to compare goes down uh, each time we, we move down the row, we're going to have to hold this range in the reference uh, area constant so or absolute. So I'm going to hit F4 there. So rank average, the number is C3, the first number that we're going to use, and we're going to compare it against the range. Each time this number is going to go down C4, C5, C6, but this range is going to stay the same. And let's hit OK. And we get 4, indicating that 61,000 is the fourth highest ranked salary of the 50. Now let's use autofill and pull this down and you'll see that each one is given a rank and we can quickly find that 64,508 in row 35 is the top salary. If we were just scroll a little bit, the second salary is over here in row 19 and that's 64,261. The third one is here in row 5 and then the fourth one is the, the first row. So it compares every salary number in C to all the salary numbers. And that's how we got the ranks. And again, in this case, we used rank.avg. OK, now let's do the quartiles. We'll come over here. Before we make Excel um, show us what the quartiles are, a quartile is a value used to divide a range of numbers into four equal groups. If we use quartile.inc, um, it includes uh, quartile 0 as the lowest value and quartile 4 as the highest value. If we use quartile.exc, which we're about to do in this example, all we get is the 25th percentile, 50th percentile, or the median value, and 75th percentile. We don't get the low and high. But if we look at some of our assignments that we're going to do, especially for the homework, you'll have quartiles 0 through 4. So it'll be 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. So in essence, 5 quartiles. And 0 is the minimum, and 4 is the maximum. 1 is the 25th percentile, 2 is the 50th percentile, or median, and 3 is the 75th percentile. OK, so let's see what the salaries are in each of these three quartiles. Okay? So what we're going to do now when we make Excel produce the quartiles, we'll put our cursor in H13. We're going to go to our formula, insert function, and we'll type quartile. I just want to show you the options. We do have a number of options. We want to do the one that excludes. That's what EXC stands for. It excludes the high and low point. It just gives us 25th, 50th, and 75th percentile. All right, where is your array of salaries? Well, the array is this C column, C3 through C52. Okay. And we're going to hold this absolute. So I'll hit F4. And the quartiles are right here, 1, 2, and 3. And that's all Excel needs to make it work. So I'm just going to hit G13 here. And as we go down to the next quartile, it'll go G14 and G15. So I'll hit Enter. And then I'll use Autofill. And this is what we get. The 75th percentile on the salaries that are listed here in column C is 57,000. The median pay is about 51,775. And the 25th percentile is 39,203. Once again, we don't have the, the min and maximum values. Otherwise, we would use quartile.inc, and we'd have quartiles 0 through 4. And that is the end of hands-on exercise number 1 in Chapter 8.